morning and welcome to this week's online church service. Today is the third week of Advent. Advent is the season in which we look forward to, with expectation and anticipation, the coming of Jesus at Christmas. We acknowledge all the good gifts that he brings into our lives. This week, in week three of Advent, we look to the joy that we have in Jesus. So let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, this third week of Advent, let us remember that the good news of Jesus' birth has the power to bring us great joy this Christmas season. Our joy isn't dependent on what is going on in our life or in our world or the people that we are with. It doesn't depend on the gifts we give or the gifts we find under the tree. We recognize that no earthly thing can ever give us complete joy. Our joy comes from you. That joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the joy that filled Mary and Joseph, is the joy that still has the power to overwhelm our hearts with rejoicing. We acknowledge, Lord, that our joy does not come from our jobs, our family, our relationships, our finances, or even our success. Our joy doesn't come from what we have on earth or who we are with. Our joy is a gift, and it is a gift that you gave us that first Christmas in Jesus Christ. We acknowledge this morning that our joy is encompassed in our Savior, King Jesus. Flood our hearts with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we have been spending some time looking at different Christmas carols over these last weeks of Advent. Today, we look at the carol, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks by Night. Our reading for today comes from Luke chapter 2. And we're reading verses 8 to 18. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. We're going to take a listen to this well-known hymn, While Shepherds Watch Their Flock.
our topic for today is all about these shepherds. These young men watching over the sheep, grazing in the fields and the hills around Bethlehem. Now I think that their role in the Christmas story is to remind us that God's love, God's gift of Jesus, is for absolutely everyone. Because all people are important to God. Think of it this way. Who are the only people to receive a personal invitation to come and see the newborn baby Jesus? It was the shepherds, an unlikely group to receive such an amazing invite. And they were so unlikely because generally shepherds were mistrusted. They were looked down upon. They were despised by everyone who lived in that day and time. And they had these feelings for some various reasons. Firstly, because looking after sheep is literally a 24-7 job. These shepherds couldn't keep the meticulous hand-washing and cleansing rituals that were part of Jewish culture that day. More than that, because they were always out in the fields watching the sheep, they couldn't get to the temple to do the ceremonial cleaning. They couldn't get to the temple to make their offerings and their sacrifices. And so they were looked down upon as unclean sinners who were far away from God. Now you would think that this hard and difficult job would pay very well. But unfortunately that was definitely not the case. These shepherds were paid next to nothing. And because of that, they were often mistrusted. People thought, well, because they're so poor, they are more than likely going to be the ones who thieve and who steal from us. People considered them dishonest and liars. Because of that, a shepherd couldn't bear testimony in a court of law. Their word could never be regarded as the truth. And on top of that, these shepherds were often illiterate and unschooled. There's no time for education when you've got to be out in the fields following your sheep. And so these shepherds were looked down upon. They had very little social standing. They weren't well liked or well loved. They spent most of their life as outsiders. People who were outcast to living on the fringes of society. Just as they lived on the fringes of Bethlehem looking after the sheep. And yet, God issued his invitation to come and see the newborn gift lying in the manger to these men. As another Christmas carol puts it, the first Noel that the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay. It is this that is so amazing about the Christmas story. That the shepherds are the exact opposite of the people who you would expect to get an invitation to come and see Jesus. Especially when you consider that Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the very Son of God. And yet the angel comes and invites these men to go and worship Christ in Bethlehem. I mean, it's not how it would work today, would it? When a famous or a powerful person gives birth to a child, it is announced firstly to the high and mighty, to kings, to celebrities, to those of high status. The people who get to go and visit this special newborn child are not the run-of-the-mill, everyday, working-class person. They are only those in the upper echelons of society. But in the case of Jesus, it was different. When God's son was born, the shepherds, the lowest of the low, the outcasts, they were the ones invited to come and witness Jesus. The angelic messengers didn't sing to anyone else that night, but the shepherds in the field. It's an amazing thing to think about. It's as if the Philharmonic Orchestra has been rehearsing and preparing all year, but then go and play their selected piece for some street sweepers 
and people living on the streets. The angels, the heavenly host, sing their glories of God to the shepherds in their fields. Now, I think God did it this way. I think that God intentionally chose the shepherds because he wanted it to be known that his love is all-inclusive. That Jesus is for everyone. He wanted people who read the story or heard the story to understand that God's love is for all people. He wanted us to remember that he is no respecter of persons, of status or of power. He doesn't love those who are important more than those who aren't so. God loves everyone. And this theme is reflected so well in the writers of this carol while shepherds watch their flocks. The writer was Nahum Tate, and he lived his life in poverty. He was poor for most of his life. He lived in constant financial distress. And when he died in 1715, he died in a debtor's prison because he couldn't pay back all the loans that he had. Now, he wrote the lyrics to the song. The music, interestingly enough, was written by George Frederick Handel, who himself was also poor, who also struggled with immense financial hardship until he finally wrote that great piece of music, The Messiah. But up until that time, he lived in squalor. Picture this. Our Heavenly Father used these two poor men from tough backgrounds to tell the story of the shepherds. Some other men from tough backgrounds about God's love for everyone. How God loves all people. No matter who you are or where you've come from or what you have. This is glorious news. It is the best news we can hear, that God is for all people. You see, we sometimes live in a world where we are looked down upon, where it's easy to feel as if you don't matter so much, as if you're not very important, as if the world wouldn't even blink an eye if you no longer existed. And we often translate that into our relationship with God. We think, well, Everyone in the world seems to ignore me. Maybe God ignores me or pretends I don't even exist as well. But that is not the case. God is for everyone. God sends his angels to speak to poor, smelly shepherds in the field. He sends Jesus to those that everyone else looks down upon. Because all people matter to him. So even if other people don't notice what is special about you, even if you seem like a forgotten individual here on this planet with 7 billion other human beings, even if you yourself start to believe the lie that you don't matter all that much, know that in God's eyes it is very different. In John 3.16 we hear the words, For God so loved the world, He loves the whole world and everyone in it. And that includes you. Our Heavenly Father doesn't limit His love to the people we think who are important. God loves everyone. And Jesus is for each and every individual. He was to be the Savior of all people, not just a chosen few. And Jesus doesn't discriminate based on intelligence or importance or social strata or color of skin or language or age. All are precious in his sight. And that is why this story about the shepherds, this carol that speaks of their experience, is important for us today. There is lots we can learn from the shepherds. And I have three things that I want to leave you with this morning. Three thoughts that I hope you will carry with you. The first point I want to make is that these shepherds watched. They watched. The Bible tells us that they were in the fields watching over their sheep on the night that Jesus was born. And as we've mentioned before, they were out in the field because they weren't as important as everyone else who was living in the warm comfort of their homes. 
These people were looked down upon. They were despised. And yet, there is something profound about the work that they do. They are looking after the sheep. The very same sheep who will be used as sacrifices in the temple. Their job is to watch over the sheep who will bring forgiveness to the people of Israel. And isn't it ironic that these shepherds watching their sheep are the first people to be told about the birth of the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God who would take away all the sins of the world. The Lamb of God who would die so that all sins for all time could be forgiven. These shepherds would soon not need to look after sheep in the fields because the Lamb of God was coming to die for them and for all humanity. Those shepherds watched. And then the second thing that these shepherds did was worship. After the angel speaks to them, after the choir of angels sings to them about the glory of God, The shepherds look at each other and say, we've got to go and see this thing that we have been told about. And the Bible says that they hurry off. They go immediately, straight away, to go and worship Jesus in Bethlehem. The Bible tells us that they find him lying in a manger and they offer him their praise and their worship. We can learn from these shepherds both in the immediacy of their reaction to God, but also in their posture. They kneel before him and worship him. They make Jesus the priority, the thing they have to do first before they do anything else. And I wonder if some of our struggles with Christmas season, some of our issues with our relationship with God, come from the fact that we do not respond immediately and we do not worship him freely. God perhaps is not the most important thing in your life. He's on the list, but he's not number one. These shepherds worship him. There is nothing else they would rather do but go and worship the newborn king. May that example be what we try and strive to do this Christmas season. To worship God first, at the beginning of every day, definitely on Christmas Day and all throughout the season. To worship and to praise Jesus, who died for all of us, who loves all people, who came to change our lives. May we worship like these shepherds worshipped. And then the last thing that these shepherds did was witness. It says that after they worshipped Christ, they ran around town and told everyone they met about what they had seen and what they had heard. They went and told their story. They told everyone they came into contact with about the angels, about Jesus, and about what he meant to them. Not only are they eager to worship, they are also eager to speak to others about God. And I think this is where many of us Christians fall short. We all struggle to have the courage or the tenacity to speak to others about Jesus. But there is something in encountering Christ. That burns in our hearts until we share it with others. And so maybe we don't need to go and stand on our soapboxes and preach to everyone. But we do need to find ways of telling our faith story. Speaking of the times that Christ has answered our prayers. Speaking of a good service that we listen to or a wonderful Christian song that meant something to our hearts. We can share parts of our faith, parts of our love for God with others. And trust that some way, somehow, in our representing Jesus to the world, we let his message of love, of hope, and of joy sink into their lives. You know, the Christian church has always depended on its members sharing their faith with others. So that it can grow and expand and move on to the next generation. One of the big fears that many church leaders have is that, We are getting to a stage where the current Christian generation is not able to pass on the message of faith to the next one. We are included in that. We need to learn from these shepherds the need to witness about our faith. And we don't do it because Jesus tells us we have to. We do it because when we see how amazing Jesus is, when we recognize his great love for us, when we are moved by his grace, 
We have to share that message with others. We don't want them to miss this wonderful opportunity. So maybe spend some time thinking this week who it is that needs to share something about your faith journey. Who in your family needs to share about Christ's love for them? Who could you share a sermon with or a song or a scripture reading that really needs to come closer to God and his love for them? Maybe this Christmas season, the greatest gift you could give to them is sharing your faith with them. We need to learn from this example of these shepherds, these unlikely heroes in the Christmas story. The people that no one would expect to receive the good news go on to be the first witnesses of Christ's birth. May we learn from their example. May we be watching and waiting for the message of God when it speaks into our lives. May we worship God, put Him first. May we honor Him with all of our lives. May He be the priority this busy season and not anything else. And may we witness. May we speak to others about our faith. May we share the love of God especially with those friends and family who desperately need to share it this Christmas season and the people who we will see. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, a famous old carol that speaks about these incredible shepherds who were, who were special enough in God's eyes to receive that first invitation, but also who had the courage to go and worship and to go and share that good news. May we know that we are just as special in God's eyes. May we too have the courage to worship and the tenacity to share his love with others. God bless you as you strive to get this right in your life. Amen. Let us pray. And so Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for the example of the shepherds. We are thankful for the reminder that you do not pick and choose favorites, Lord, but all are precious in your eyes. You do not favor the rich or the powerful or those who have it all together. You came for all people. Your love is for all people. We thank you, Lord, that even when it feels like the rest of the world has forgotten about us or that we aren't important, that your love and your gift in Jesus reminds us that that is not true. We thank you for the shepherds, Lord, and that we can learn the great value that there is in watching and waiting for your word to come into our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would help us this Christmas season to be ever vigilant, to be ever listening for the messages that you will speak to us this time of year. We also pray, Lord, that you would give us the courage to worship you, to put you first this Christmas season, to not make it about family or meals or presents, but to instead make this season about you, about the Christ child, who came into this world as a great gift of love. And we pray, Lord, that our worship would lead into witnessing, that you would nudge us, that you would give us the real strength of character we need to stand up and share your love with others, especially with those whom we are close with and who we will see this Christmas season. We know, Lord, that we can't do any of this on our own or in our own strength. So we ask for your help. We ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to work in us so that we can get this right. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so folks, as we come to the end of this service, we are going to sing together, I will offer up my life.
The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.